Hello everybody, this is Carm Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 8th Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over coroutines, so let's get started. So, for those of you who don't know, a coroutine is a function that can be started and stopped mid-execution. So, let's get into how to declare it. So, let we do co equals coroutine. Let's see if it comes up. Nope. Coroutine dot create. And then for the parameters, we have the function. So we do function and the parameters. I don't know if I went over this in the function tutorial, but you can have an anonymous function. A function doesn't have a name, but if it's not used in a context like this, then you'll have no way to access the function. So it'll be useless. So function print hello and end. So that's how you declare it. And if we run this, nothing happens. So to run the function, instead of just calling the name of the function, we have to do coroutine.resume, even though it hasn't started yet. Resume, and then the name of the coroutine. So now we get hello, so the coroutines run. So right now, this is just a complicated way to create and call a function. So let's get into the real use of a coroutine. Let's get rid of this, if we can get that right and do that so now for i equals zero i or ten uh, do we're creating for loop do we'll say print i and then coroutine dot yield we'll get into what that does in a minute and end. So now we have a for loop. So what you'd expect to happen, since we're printing i each time, you'd expect it to print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then stop. But in a coroutine, this would happen. We just get 0 because it prints i and then it calls the function coroutine.yield, which is what stops the execution of the function. And th the execution will not resume until the program gets another call to coroutine.resume. So let's just copy and paste this a few more times. So now you get 0, 1, 2 because we have three calls to coroutine.resume, one to start it and then make it print 0, one to make it print 1, and then one to make it print 2. So you can also pass parameters to your coroutine functions. So let's get rid of this. We'll change the function up a little. We don't need this anymore. And we'll do print a, b, and we'll add the parameters A and B. So now, coroutine.resume, I forgot to put the parameters in. To pass the parameters in, you just pass them in as parameters to the resume function, so we'll do three and four. So now we pass the coroutine and then the arguments to the coroutine function in. So three and four. The coroutine.yield function will also return any parameters passed into coroutine.resume. So let's add another line to this function. Print uh, co, comma, and then coroutine. Coroutine, I can't spell today. I think that's right. Dot yield. So now we need another coroutine.resume. Coroutine dot resume, and we can pass in any other number of parameters. We need co, and then we'll say hello, and five and nine, just random numbers. So we get three four from the parameters actually given to the coroutine function, and then we get co, hello, five and nine. And the reverse of that, we can get rid of this, and we'll change the function up again. So we'll just have coroutine dot yield. So the reverse of the last example, any arguments passed to the coroutine dot yield function will be returned by the corresponding coroutine dot resume function minus b. So that's just a random example. So coroutine dot resume. Let's get rid of this. Actually, no, we do need that. Uh, 5 and 6 we'll say. So now we need to print coroutine.resume to get the results from this. And we get true 11 
negative 1. So 5 plus 6 is 11, and 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And we get that true. The true just signifies that the coroutine function ran correctly and didn't produce any errors. So coroutines can be useful for passing local data between functions. So say you want to send something from one function and then receive it in another function. You could use the, cor the coroutine.yield and coroutine.resume, returning the values passed to the other one for that. Uh, let's have that be your homework. Make a program that does that. You can use it in any context you want. You can make like some kind of mail program, anything you want. But that's your homework. Do that before the next tutorial. So that's about all. One last thing, just kind of a useful debugging thing. You can do print coroutine.status. Dot status, I think. Status, that can turn blue. Yes. Print coroutine dot status. For this, um, bad arguments. Oh, we need to pass co. So we get suspended because it was yielded. And then if we resume it, coroutine dot resume. Oh. Coroutine.resume. And then we can copy this. Uh, again, we need co here. So suspended because coroutine.yield is called. And so it's waiting to be run again. So that's what suspended means. And then dead. Um, a coroutine is dead once the function ends. Um, you need to reset that coroutine once function ends it's over it can't be used anymore and any calls to coroutine dot resume past here will uh, we need co I'm very bad at this co and nothing will be output there and also if we print this it will actually produce an error false cannot resume a dead coroutine so that's why we have that true false parameter. It will return false if the coroutine is over. So I think that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I think we'll be getting into meta tables, which is a more adv advanced topic in the tables category. So you can look forward to that. Remember to do your homework, create some kind of sending and receiving program using the coroutines. So see you in the next tutorial.